Hey guys, it's Kay. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hello, welcome. My name is Kay. I'm a professional home organizer and singer here in the Boston area, and I am here to inspire you to live a more organized life. So today I'd like to talk a little bit about clutter and why you may be holding on to it or inadvertently bringing it into your house. Now, before we start this video, if you've never seen me before, I do tend to talk a lot, so if that's not really your thing, um, you can go ahead and skip this video, or I'll have a shorter list down below that you can read on my blog that will give you some of the reasons if you're not really into chatty videos. Now, in my videos where I talk about clutter or use the term clutter, I like to uh, reiterate that my, in my experience, the definition of clutter is really only solely dependent on the item and your relationship with that item and pretty much nothing else. Is the relationship healthy? Is it destructive? These are things you need to consider uh, when defining whether or not something is cluttered to you or to someone else. This doesn't just refer to items that are miscellaneous or ornamental in nature, although these are characteristics that clutter can definitely have, they are not mutually exclusive. If you're interested in hearing more of what I believe defines clutter, I did film a video a couple of years ago about clutter. Uh, it'll be linked somewhere down below. You can check that out after watching this one. Okay, reason number one, you have homeless items. Although I don't like to adhere to rules because everybody is an individual and things work differently for different people and different households. But in general, I like to say that items in your home should have a place to live. And if they don't, it can definitely uh, create some problems and a lot of people don't notice where items are accumulating clutter in their houses There's can be places like the kitchen counters the certain chairs in your home You know everyone talks about the chair where they have like clothes They've worn once but like don't want to put in the washing and don't want to put back in the closet those kinds of places so pay particular attention to those spaces where clutter is accumulating and notice your own behavior if every item in your home does not have a place to live, you are inviting chaos into your home. You are inviting uh, entropy as it normally is to exist in your home without rain and it can be very chaotic. So just make sure that when you are bringing items into your home that you have a place to actually store them when they get there. Number two, you are shopping for sport. I am definitely guilty of this because I am human. I always like to talk to you guys as a human talking to another human and if you are human you are probably going to exhibit certain behaviors that are of human nature and shopping is intrinsically fun. It's been scientifically proven that when you buy new items and you bring them home you get a whole serotonin and dopamine boost in your brain. It's super fun. However, it often creates problems in your house having to do with clutter. I like to advise my clients and people who I talk to about shopping and shopping habits to practice what I like to refer to as mindful shopping. If you'd like me to do a extended video on mindful shopping, I can definitely do that for you. Um, but it's basically the practice of shopping and asking yourself a series of questions and pretty much thinking it through before you actually go to the checkout counter and bring the item home. A little trick I like to offer to people when they are practicing mindful shopping is to go out and window shop and if you see something you really like and you wanna take it home, but you're not sure if you're really gonna use it when you get there, you don't have a space for it, you're kind of stressing out, take out your phone and take a picture of it. I find that this does sort of two things. It sort of fulfills that hunter-gatherer sort of instinct in me of like, I went out and I'm, boop, oh, I'm capturing an item with my phone. I've, cap I've captured it, I've got it. And also provides a little something to refer back to if you really want the item. I've been saving this picture of a plant in my phone for at least a week now, and I think that I will go back for it. But however, it's been there for over a week. I really wanted it when I passed by it in the plant store, but I was like, hey, I don't know. I might be just being impulsive. So I took a snapshot of it. I love to look at it. It's really pretty. I may bring one home, but in the meantime, I'm not cluttering up my place full of plants. This leads into the next reason you might be bringing clutter into your house is that while you were out shopping, you came across something that you couldn't resist because it was a great deal. Retailers and advertising teams are great at making you believe that you are saving money by spending money. And hey, I'm again, I'm talking to you 
as a human to another human. It's definitely happened to me too. I have cannot express to you the amount of times I have been in a client space and I have pulled out like a blouse that she hasn't worn in four years and it still has the tags on it with a little red tag that says, you know, $4. And I asked them, have you worn this in the past? And you, since you brought it home, I noticed it still has the tags on it. And they'll say, no, but it was a great deal. <laughs> I think that sometimes it's harder to use these things, like it's harder to take the tags off and actually wear it because it takes away its sort of trophy status. You know, you take off the tag with the red markings, you know, it marks through like $59.99, $39.99, $29.99, $19.99, finally it's $9.99 and you, you want to hold on to that feeling that you got a great deal. By removing this tags and actually wearing the item and using it, you actually having to accept it for what it is, which is an item you own and an item you need to account for. And in a lot of cases, the converse is true, where you may have paid a lot of money for an item and maybe you haven't used it or you don't need it, and it's just sitting in your home idle and you feel like you can't let go of it because you paid so much money for it, because it has so much perceived value. It can be hard to get rid of these things because it feels like you are throwing your money away, but it has as much perceived value as it does sitting in your house idle doing nothing as it does with someone else actually using it. If you feel like you need to get some sort of monetary compensation from it, you can definitely sell the item online or, you know, to a friend. But this requires time and effort, which usually equates to money. So you have to ask yourself, are you willing to put the time in to actually selling the item or would it behoove you to actually just get it out of your house? Number four, you're not getting rid of stuff regularly. My parents recently downsized their house and I helped my dad declutter his closet. And in the process of doing this, I asked him how, when was the last time you actually decluttered anything in your closet? And he looked me dead in the eye and said, never. Setting up a regular date with yourself to invoice your spaces and taking out what you don't need and keeping only what you do need can be a real tension saver for your home and save you a lot of time and grief. Your dynamic and your life is dynamic. You may not use some of the same stuff you were using last year maybe because your life has changed or maybe you moved to a different part of the country that's warmer and you don't need all those winter coats anymore, which jealous of you if you don't need winter coats. It's not like winter. A lot of the stuff that I got Clover for when he was a puppy and it was mostly for like potty training and stuff like that, I don't have a need for that stuff anymore. So a lot of that stuff is out of our house until we get another puppy, which is not something that we are looking to do in the near future. Uh, we may, but we may not. I don't know, which brings me to the next one. Number five, you're falling into the someday trap. I find I run into this a lot with clients and there are some subcategories of this that are a little more specific, but in general, the someday trap is when people have items and they're like, well, I'll do that someday or I will use that someday or what if I need that someday. Usually nine times out of 10, someday, never happens and they just hold on to that item for the rest of their lives. Now, do you want to have that item there just in case you need it someday? That's up to you. But I'm gonna tell you with absolute honesty and in my experience, someday usually never comes, so just get it out. Here's one that sort of has to do with shopping, but it's mainly the cosmetic industry that is doing this, is that you are accepting too many unnecessary free gifts with purchase. I've definitely been guilty of this as well, mostly when checking out at Sephora online. When I see I can put a coupon code and get an extra like free hair product that I am not going to use. <laughs> the if you buy this, we'll give you this for free system is a very good marketing and is very difficult to resist. It's free, why not? Well, A, it's not the item you are actually shopping for. And B, at the end of the day, it's not really free. It's now something that you own and need to account for. So it's not, I'm not saying don't accept these items at all. I love at Sephora, if someone gives me a little bottle of eye makeup remover, I love that because I use that and I regularly buy eye makeup remover, so it's sort of a bonus. I'm more thinking of the cosmetic companies and the fragrance companies who will give you a free bag or free purse with purchase. You were not searching for a purse when you went out. You didn't need a cosmetic bag you probably have too many of these things to begin with. So um, 
The next time you are offered a free gift with purchase and you really don't need that free thing, you can simply just turn it down. Again, it's okay to accept these items if they're definitely things you're going to use, but you really have to consider that before you accept your free gift with purchase. And speaking of gifts, you're accepting friendly freebies and you don't know how to say no. If friends and family are offering you free items and you don't know how to turn them down, this can be a really tricky situation to deal with because the dynamics with your friends and family is very treacherous waters and it really depends on your relationship with that friend or that family member. Some people express their love by giving items and they feel like their items are an extension of themselves, which is something that is a totally natural feeling. And having you then reject this item that they're giving to you, it can feel like the, you are rejecting them, which is not the case, but that may be what it feels like to that person. If you're close to them and you feel like they may understand, you may need to have a talk with them and say that you may not have the space for these items that are being offered or you won't use them or they may not fit or they may not fit for your lifestyle and that you appreciate the sentiment but you cannot accept. Again, some people may have a really difficult time with this and some family members may have a really very difficult time when you refuse a gift that is offered to you from them. So just navigate it very carefully in a way because you know your friends and family better than anyone else. So make it the best decision based on your relationship with that person. Um, but know that it is more than okay to say thank you, but no thank you. I'm planning a more in-depth video on this phenomenon, so stay tuned to the channel if you wanna learn some more. Number eight, you're holding on to the past. This is similar to the someday trap, but it's a little different because there is a little more emotion involved in this one. You may have items that you've actually used in the past, maybe you use them a lot, or things that you wore a lot, but they're no longer relevant in your life today, and it's really difficult to admit that and admit that that is not who you are right now. This can be a very difficult thing to deal with, especially with um, some of the women that I work with because some of them are holding on to clothes that no longer fit them and they have aspirations of you know losing 50 pounds, 100 pounds and being able to fit into that old wardrobe again. And then others may have you know, done a hobby before that required a lot of time, like maybe painting or sculpting, and now that they're very, very busy with their careers, they no longer are finding the time to do this, and they're feeling very guilty that that is not who they are anymore because they have different priorities. While the possibility of going on a diet the losing weight that's there, or the possibility of actually finding time to do those hobbies again, maybe finding the time to paint and sculpt, the possibility is there. That is not the priority right now. And that is maybe something that's very difficult to accept. If you really wanted to paint more than anything in the world, the truth is you would find the time. However, it's not your greatest priority right now. So sometimes that's really hard for people to accept and you have to really have a heart to heart conversation with yourself about what your life is like and what kinds of things are important to you. And that leads into number nine, which is also sort of a subcategory, but it is a different thing in itself. Let's say you do have the time or you found the time to express yourself through art and you find yourself wanting to paint a lot. Sometimes I find with clients, instead of uh, nurturing that hobby and nurturing that particular one thing is that they get so excited about this new thing or hobby and anticipating you know, more, creating more, that they will go out and buy more and more and more supplies and just clutter up their home with things they just don't have the bandwidth to use. They collect all of these impending projects which pile up to like maybe like 20, 30, 40 impending projects. And that pile, even if it's like a mental pile, gets so high and so big, it becomes super overwhelming and they may just scrap the whole hobby altogether. Again, talking to you as a human, to another human, I am guilty of this as well. I love video games, I love sitting down and playing. And when I get excited about 
playing as an activity, I download all kinds of fun video games. But I have to admit to myself and you guys that I have only played the same like four or five games over the past year and I have some games that I have purchased and actually never started. This clutter is totally digital and is a little less of a problem in my house. Um, but the same thing happens with tangible items. So next time you're really getting into a hobby or an activity that you love, pay attention to what your behavior is in, in accumulating items related to that hobby. And lastly, you don't know what to do with things you wanna declutter. I interviewed a potential client who was totally crippled by the idea of their items becoming trash or not being disposed of properly. And that totally stalled their process of decluttering their house. How to dispose of items properly is a totally valid concern as we have a huge plastic problem in the world right now and you wanna make sure that things are recycled properly, disposed of properly, not becoming a huge environmental hazard. However, not having the knowledge to dispose of things properly can really stop someone to act from actually decluttering their house in the first place. To a lesser degree, I find that this idea of being overwhelmed by what to do with stuff when it leaves your house is very common. So I'll put some helpful links down below on my blog to tell you what to do with common items that you don't know what to do with and you need to get rid of them. And there'll be sort of household items that you probably didn't think of, like what do you do with your old glasses? I don't know. Links down below. You can donate them. I am working on a series on how to dispose of or reuse or recycle items properly, so stay tuned to the channel for that if you're interested. Okay, so those are just some of the reasons you might be holding on to clutter. If you can think of any more, go ahead and put them down in the comments below. Uh, if you guys are interested in more videos on organizing, cleaning, you like cute dogs, go ahead and subscribe. I publish three times a week, and uh, I will see you in the next one. Bye. You want to get some lunch? You want to? You just want to go back to sleep? Yeah. You looking? You looking very? <laughs> I need to brush you, huh? You tired? Yeah. He just he was at the park for a long time, so he's like he wants to really go back to sleep. Oh, okay. You want me to let you take a nap? All right. All right. Let's get something to eat and we take a nap. Okay. Good idea. All right. Let's go. Come. Wanna come?